Atlanto occipital dislocation injuries are severe injuries. From its name, it entails injury of the ligaments leading to variable degree of dislocation. In this video, we will discuss this type of injury, the radiographic assessment and the management. I am Mohamed Raz and this is your knowledge platform for the brain, spine and beyond. In my last video, we discussed the occipital condylar fractures and touched upon the craniosurvical junction stability. If you haven't seen this video, make sure to watch it through the link above. The Atlanta occipital dislocation, as I said, entails injury to the ligamentous structures to a degree that allows the dislocation to happen. The main two ligaments that are providing strong support to the Atlanta occipital joint is the tectorial and alar ligaments. We will discuss that in a different video to go through the craniosophical junction anatomy. CT is usually used in those patients to assess the degree of injury so that we need to draw the some lines, which includes the BDI, the BAI, the Barris ratio, and the CC1. Let's have a look on these. The CC1 is the condylar C1 interval, and it's one of the with the highest sensitivity. You better see this in the coronal image or laterally in each side in the sagittal view. In adults, this should be less than 1.4, and in the kids, it should be less than 2.5 uh, millimeter. As you can see in this image, you can see here, this is the occipital condyle, and this is the C1, and this is the interval in between. Again, on a coronal image, this is the occipital condyle, and this is the C1 lateral mass, this is the condyle, C1 lateral mass, and this is the space in between, which, as I said, represents the CC1 uh, interval. And as you can see in this picture, you can see in this um, CT scan, you can see the interval is completely disrupted here. The other line is the Bayesian dental interval, which from its name is the distance between the Bayesian and the dense, as you can see here. So if you go between the Bayesian, which is the lower part of the uh, clivus, and the dense, that will be the interval in between. This should be less than 12 millimeter in the adults. Then the other one is the Bayesian axial interval, which is the distance between the basium and an axial line, which goes just posterior to the C2, as you can see here. And this should be less than 12 millimeter in adults. Again, you go between the, that line as the uh, basium and the line on the posterior surface of the C2. And then we have the Powers ratio, which has a low sensitivity, which I will explain in another video. The management of the patient with atlanto-occipital uh, dislocation is very likely to be surgical because those patients will have a degree of instability that would require some sort of fixation, which is likely to be in the form of occipital cervical fusion. Let's have a look on some of uh, patient scans and see how we can identify this on the imaging. So in this image, as you can see, the patient has a atlanto-occipital dislocation. You can see here the basium, as we said. This is the uh, dense, and you can see the space is, uh, the, the interval is huge. Uh, this patient has been involved in a road traffic accident. And just to let you know, I mean, or to have a look, basically, um, this patient, if you look on the CT head, I mean, the brain looks tight. There is subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is likely traumatic. So this means that those patients likely to go through severe kind of trauma uh, or severe injury that leads to this kind of, of uh, dislocation. Again, if you go all the way laterally, you can see the uh, condyle or the C, uh, CC1 or in interval, as I explained, and you can see this is, uh, this is uh, much, much bigger than, uh, than usual. Then if we look at this kid, five-year-old uh, girl, again, if we look at this coronal image, you can see the condyle here, you can see the C1 uh, lateral mass, and again, the interval in between is, uh, is so big in comparison to the normal. Again, if we look at the uh, sagittal imaging, you will see how the distance between the Bayesian and the dense. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next one. See you.